The latest Jujutsu Kaisen chapter was one that confirmed a lot of our doubts in regards to Yuji's motives and also Yuta's great plan. To use Jacob's ladder to ultimately shatter Sukuna's grasp on Megumi's soul and allow Yuji to hold onto Megumi's soul and drag him directly from Sukuna's control. But was there more than just that in this chapter? Let's take a deep dive and talk about it. Throughout the various chapters in the last few months, we have been given so many scenarios where viewers have been left to wonder just what the hell is actually going on. And in this chapter, it actually does reveal a bit more on what is actually happening behind the scenes. Or well, what has happened in the last month that they've been prepping. In this chapter, we finally see what Yuji has been doing, which is him training to amplify his techniques, even though we still haven't really seen what that entails exactly. Nevertheless, what is peculiar is the explanation of the plan to separate Sukuna and Megumi from each other, as it gives a strong indication that Yuji himself seems to have greatly matured as we see him holding Sukumo's diary while explaining away, which seems very uncharacteristic of Yuji. Yuji has always been depicted by Gege to be the simple-minded dummy idiot character, and if anyone has seen the season 1 of the anime, it is portrayed quite well in there too. Even Yuji himself admits that he isn't that smart in multiple instances throughout season 1 and all of this seems to contradict what just happened in 251. So what does this indicate though? Could this perhaps mean something or is it just some form of character development? I for one think that Yuji has grown extensively in this last month due to the growth he had experienced through chapters and chapters of suffering that he underwent that he has ultimately forced himself to grow up a bit and aim to become a more dependable, reliable character. Which is essential to the storyline too, especially after the unfortunate death of Gojo. Which is also what we see in this current fight. Now before we continue, I think it's important to also understand the concept of Kaisen and how it applies to characters in this manga too. I've explored this concept before in a previous video, but I'll give a shorter summary as of now. Kaisen directly translates to continuous individual improvement, and it is the backbone of what makes Yuji, Yuji. As a character, we have seen him advance time and time again, growing stronger and smarter each and every time. Additionally, it is crucial to note this as well. Yuji is the only character in the series that was born without an innate cursed technique, and is the only character that has to train to develop a cursed technique. Everyone else's techniques have been granted to them from birth, whereas Yuji has been the only character to have needed to grind it out and learn and improve. Which I don't think is some random coincidence. I think it's definitely part of a grand plan from Gege. Now back to this fight. We definitely see how involved and capable Yuji is within the equation of this fight and how he is almost a main centerpiece for the plan of retrieving Megumi. Yet as Yuji and Yuta continue to throw attacks at Sukuna, we see both of them consistently injured and healing over and over again, which just goes to show just how strong Sukuna is as an adversary. Now it is important to note that Sukuna isn't even at full power, since he is still overheated from the fight with Gojo and hence completely unable to use his domain expansion either. And even then, he is still able to completely dominate against Yuta and Yuji. Eventually, the fight comes to the point where they're able to fully employ Jacob's ladder and give Yuji the opportunity to touch Megumi's soul, only for it to all fall short as Megumi has completely given up the will to continue to live, which allows Sukuna to break free from their control and unleash his slashes once again. And this chapter then ends with Maki entering the domain and stabbing Sukuna from the back, and this is where the chapter finishes. Now I think there are several things to note upon finishing this chapter. First of all, there is incredible value in dissecting the essence of what Sukuna represents in this fight. As we all know, Yuji and Yuta are both vastly exceptional characters in their strengths and abilities, but their differences is what makes it interesting. Yuta and Yuji correlates with exceptional talent and exceptional willpower, respectively. Yuta is a born natural whereas Yuji is a character that bleeds grit, willpower and courage. And this goes into play when an obstacle like Sukuna appears and we see the beauty of how two differing forces respond to an immovable object. On the one hand, Yuji completely embodies resilience as he continues to charge at Sukuna, 
Whilst on the other hand, Yuta resembles the confidence of raw talent as he drives all the techniques he has accumulated into Sukuna too. And I think Gege's motivation for building this chapter's fight like this was to truly demonstrate the power of human resolve, especially when it comes to a seemingly impossible task or goal. If we take a step back and examine our very own lives, we become aware of the fact that no matter how talented or untalented we are at anything, there will always be impossibilities in our lives that we have to attempt to overcome. Be it a death in the family, a transformation of the body, building a business, etc. All of these are obstacles that can be tackled in a similar manner, either Yuji's method of raw resilience and grit, or Yuta's method of confiding in what you are talented in and using that as a tool against those difficult goals. And I also think Maki has a role in this chapter in regards to all of this too. Maki can be seen as a middle ground between Yuta and Yuji, as in, she is deeply flawed and disadvantaged with her lack of cursed energy, but she is instead ultra talented in one area instead. Yet what the outcome of this will be will only truly be revealed in the next chapter as we witness, hopefully, a very masterful battle between someone who matched Toji versus someone who matched Gojo. With all that being said, what do you guys think? Also, even though I've been talking about this chapter like someone who's written it, I also don't understand some things. What did Yuta mean by the finger? If someone or everyone could comment below to help me understand what the hell that panel meant, I'd deeply appreciate it. Please leave a like and subscribe for more content if you're interested, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Love you all, and keep struggling my friends.